December is here and with it comes our first rainstorm of the season. We've already received some rain, but the heaviest may still be on its way. We'll have a complete look at the weather forecast and how it's impacting our drought. Shoppers on this Cyber Monday are still taking advantage of sales online. We'll take a look at the long holiday weekend of sales starting with the rush during Black Friday. You might be surprised to hear that retailers are not too happy with the results. OC News starts right now. I'm Alyssa Flores. And I'm Quinn Tian. OC News is brought to you by the Broadcast Journalism students at Cal State Fullerton. Southern California is expected to get slammed with rain tomorrow after what has been a very dry season for the year. Forecasters expect the heavy rain to be in effect starting early Tuesday morning and going until Wednesday afternoon. Flood warnings are in effect and residents are starting to gear up for the possible mudslides and disasters. We have Joseph Anderson here at Cal State Fullerton with details about what to expect heading into Tuesday and with some reactions about the upcoming rain. Cal State Fullerton is normally a site of sunny skies and comfortable temperatures, but that doesn't appear to be the case this week. Rain is in the forecast all week long as clouds are set to dwell over campus. We know what rain means, fallen tree branches and puddles. Puddles everywhere. Students are dodging the heavy rainfall by heading to the library for shelter. But the rain is not always avoidable. Oh man, the rain has been just devastating. People have just been driving recklessly on the street. You can't even, you can't even drive, man. You know, a little shower here, a little shower there. People are, it's a hurricane out here, man. Athletics fields have been shut down in anticipation of the inclement weather. And some practices were even canceled on campus. The rain has definitely impacted Cal State Fullerton students already as they prepare for more downpour later this week. From Fullerton, I'm Joseph Anderson. Back to you. Thanks for that report, Joseph. We're finally welcoming some rain to California, and we're welcoming it with open arms. The rain is much needed, there's no doubt about that, but as we welcome the rain, we also welcome mudslide and flood warnings. Flood warnings are being called in the following regions, coastal areas, Riverside County, Inland Empire, San Diego County, Ventura County, Santa Ana Mountains, San Bernardino Mountains, and the Riverside County Mountains. Before we get into more detail about the upcoming storm, let's talk about the current temperature here in Fullerton. We're at a current temperature of 70 degrees with a low of 57. Winds are traveling at about five miles per hour at a higher 62% humidity. The sun rose this morning at 6.39 a.m. and it set just a little bit ago at 4.42 p.m. Now for the temperatures for the week. Now some regions in parts of California experienced a little bit of rain um, spotting over the weekend, but we can expect the rain to continue for the next couple of days. Widespread rain will start to develop late tonight and even into Tuesday and Wednesday. On Tuesday, we can expect cold, heavy rain all day with a high of 64 and a low of 59. We're anticipating one to three inches of rain from Tuesday's storm and the rain is predicted to continue to Wednesday. Wednesday's at a high of 70 degrees with a low of 56. Later on in the week, temperatures are going to stay around 70 degrees with cooler nights in the low 50s. Now, 80% of California is currently in either extreme or exceptional, exceptional drought. So let's take a look at the widespread rain uh, we're expecting tomorrow across the state. As you can see, California is in store for some much needed rain from San Diego to Bakersfield, all the way up north to San Francisco, Sacramento and Crescent City. Because of the freezing temperatures in this region over here, uh, we can also expect some snow in South Lake Tahoe and Yosemite. Now for your regional forecast, temperatures in the coast are going to be in the 60s all week long with the coldest day being tomorrow at a high of 64 and a low of 59. Again, we can expect heavy rain today and tomorrow, or, um, excuse me, tomorrow and Wednesday uh, with lighter showers on Wednesday. Now let's check out your temperatures uh, for the week in the IE. 
Uh, Monday and Friday are sharing a high of 71, while tomorrow temperatures drop to 60 to a high of 62 and a low of 59. Uh, Wednesday again the rain, a high of 68 and a low of 55. And it's finally time to use those jackets and scarves because the temperatures are going to stay in the high 60s with lows in the 50s. Now let's see what temperatures are like nationwide for tonight. It's a cool 53 degrees in Southern California over here in Los Angeles. It's even cooler in Las Vegas at 40 degrees and in Phoenix at 47 degrees. Uh, as you can see, there's storms over here on the East Coast, uh, over here in Boston and New York. And you're even seeing uh, snow over here in uh, Buffalo and Detroit. And notice the freezing temperatures over here um, across the nation in the pink. Uh, we're looking at uh, Kansas City, a low of 18, and over here, Rapid City, 22 degrees. That's your weather forecast for today. Stay dry and stay warm in the next few days. And remember to be careful if you're driving out there in the rain. And if you don't have an umbrella, I'd suggest you go pick one up before tonight. Guys, back to you. Pacific Coast Highway in Ventura County was hit with a mudslide over the weekend and has forced the road to be closed again today. A nine-mile stretch between Yerba Buena and Las Posas roads are closed after the ground collapsed around 3 p.m. on Sunday. Around a dozen vehicles were stuck in the mudslide, some areas almost three feet deep. The foothills around PCH have been vulnerable to the Colby fire that took place in January and it is not expected to reopen until Tuesday. Drivers are being advised to use the 101 freeway and Canyon roads as an alternative. Did you go shopping this Black Friday? Shoppers nationwide camped out this past week with hopes of catching good deals. Liliana Mota has more with the story. Black Friday began a day early this year with Best Buy opening its doors Thursday at 5 o'clock in the evening. Some shoppers like Jose Hernandez and friend Jesse Garcia have been waiting since last Saturday in hopes of scoring a good deal. They say camping out has become tradition. It's tradition now, you know. We don't even know what they're selling. Well, really, sometimes I just come here just because they have a special 50% off, you know, 20, 10%. I'm still coming out here. <laughs> Sometimes I just come here just to kick it with my friends. Yeah? One of the bigger deals this year was a 60-inch Sony television priced at $799. The crowd gathered around a Best Buy employee as she passed out tickets for the items on sale. But things soon got a little heated when some shoppers cut the line, leaving those who have been waiting since last week with no tickets. This woman, who asked to remain unnamed, says she's very upset because she's been waiting for seven days and was cheated out of her ticket. I am very frustrated with this store. We camp out every year and this has never happened. It's not fair. I've been waiting here since Thursday and I didn't get a ticket. Other customers said the distribution of tickets was very unorganized compared to previous years. As for the two friends waiting, they were able to get the tickets for what they wanted and have advice for future Black Friday campers. Make sure you have a heater, a tent, and you have a bunch of blankets and a nice pillow. According to DealNews.com, a website that tracks Black Friday deals, Best Buy ranked number three in the top five stores shoppers went to. Yeah. Reporting for OC News, Liliana Mota. The shopping frenzy continues today with millions of shoppers skipping the lines at the store for Cyber Monday. The holiday shopping rush started on Thanksgiving Day with stores opening their doors early for the new Grey Thursday that rolled into Black Friday. Many stores had offered week-long deals leading up to the Thanksgiving holiday. According to the National Retail Federation, sales are down 11.3% this year from $57.4 billion last year to $50.9 billion this year. Data firm Comscore estimated online sales on Thanksgiving Day rose 32% compared to last year to hit just over $1 billion in spending. Deals are being extended to have deals are being extended have led to some of the spending being spread out, but retailers aren't as concerned as they are gearing up for a stronger holiday season. A great Mexican idol dies and two men get very lucky in China. This and much more in today's world news. Here's Liliana Mota. Thank you guys. There's a lot going on in the world. It was a, a sad weekend for many as Me Mexico's greatest comedian, Robert 
Roberto Gonzalez Volanos passed away November 28th due to heart failure. An estimated 40,000 individuals attended his memorial held this Sunday at the Azteca Stadium. He was known as Chespirito, Little Shakespeare, and was an idol in the Latin community. His shows have entertained generations of Latin American children throughout the years. His programs aired in over 25 countries, those including Russia and, and Thailand. Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto said Mexico has lost an icon whose work was transcend has transcended generations and borders. He may be gone, but his legacy will continue to live on, and he will never be forgotten. Things in China got a little scary this weekend. Two men escaped their car right before it was swallowed by a sinkhole in Jingyang City. Street surveillance footage shows a white sedan stopped in the middle of, of the road as its left front wheel ran into the sinkhole, which appeared after a truck passed the road. The driver and the passenger immediately got off to check their car and found the road surface had collapsed. Minutes later, the sinkhole swallowed the entire car. Authorities said the sinkhole was caused by collapsing sands beneath the surface. The road is currently under repair. And in lighter news, Cyber Monday has also hit the UK, but, but sales are not anticipated to be as large as the US, but that doesn't stop shoppers from going online, taking advantage of discounts, and finding good deals. Well, that wraps it up, that wraps it up here at World News. Back to you guys. Warning, spoiler alert. The Walking Dead kills off one of their major characters in the show. Stay tuned to find out all the details. It's what powers our journey to reach unimaginable heights. It fosters a sense of yearning to create, explore, and soar. It strengthens our will to climb to the top. It's the bedrock of our conviction that nothing's impossible. It transforms us and sets us free to thrive and build lives of purpose. Titan pride is at the heart of who we are. Spoiler alert, the Walking Dead mid-season finale had everyone talking, and to tell you why, here's Monza Jimenez with entertainment. Thanks guys, you may have, we may have had a week off, but the busy world of entertainment sure didn't. So let's get started. There's been a security breach at Sony Pictures. Many of the studio's newest films have been leaked online due to the recent hack. Many of the movies are not even released in theaters yet, causing problems and frustration for the studios. The studio is working very closely with law enforcement to make sure that the criminals behind the hacked are found. Nicole Paluzzi, aka Snooki, got married to longtime boyfriend Gianni Laval this weekend. The Jersey Shore star had a Great Gatsby themed wedding. Her bridal party consisted of co stars Jay Wow, Dina, and Sammy, as well as DJ Polly D and Ron as guests. Missing from the party were Vinny and Mike. Uh oh, looks like they've got themselves a situation. TV goers and fans of The Walking Dead found themselves at the edge of their seats during the show's mid-season finale that aired last night. Another major character death caused hysteria and fans took to Facebook, Twitter, and other social media to rave on and on about what happened. So watch out for all those spoilers in your news feed today. Yesterday marked the one-year anniversary of actor Paul Walker's death. Co-stars and fans took to social media to leave memories and special words about the late star. Fast and Furious fans are anxiously awaiting the new film out in April, which was the last film Walker worked on before his sudden passing. The rumor mills are churning again. Has Taylor Swift found herself a new rock star boyfriend? It has been reported that Swift exchanged phone numbers with the 1975's lead singer Matt Healy at the band's concert last week in L.A. Many speculate that the new pair is starting to be exclusive. But in the words of Taylor herself, haters gonna hate. Player's going to play, Faker's going to fake, and I'm just going to shake it off. That's all I have for you. Back to you guys. The world is coming together to raise awareness of a disease and find out what you might be doing that could endanger your baby's life. Alyssa has more for you in health. 
Today is World AIDS Day, and countries all over the world are coming together to raise awareness for the fatal disease. Companies including Starbucks, Bank of America, and Apple are donating a portion of their proceeds today to help fight against the disease. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, an estimated 35 million people are living with HIV AIDS worldwide. In a proclamation, President Barack Obama urged Americans to remember those who have lost their lives to AIDS and provide support and comfort to those living with the disease. A red ribbon hangs on the front of the White House to commemorate the day. And if you would like to learn more and find out what you can do to help, visit Human Rights Campaign website at hrc.org. The death of an Ohio State University football player raises questions again about the long-term effects of concussions in sports. The body of the missing player was found Sunday afternoon. Ohio State's football team asked thousands of fans for help this weekend as the Buckeyes took the field without backup defense lineman Costa Carriage. A day later, police found a body inside a dumpster near the OSU campus. Police say the six foot five, 285 pound athlete died of an apparently self-inflicted gunshot wound, raising questions about what toll football may have on his mind. Kara George's mother filed a missing person report the day before Thanksgiving. She told the police officer her son had suffered several concussions resulting in spells of confusion. In his last text message to her sent at about 1.30 in the morning, Wednesday, Kara George complained about that confusion, writing, I am sorry if I have embarrassment, if I am an embarrassment. Students gathered for a vigil Sunday night where his friends remembered a fifth year senior who had only been on the team since August. According to a new government study, despite deadly risks, more than half of American parents allow their babies to sleep on soft bedding. Researchers found the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention looked at data from 1993 to 2010 in the National Sleep Position Study. Although the use of infant bedding has declined in recent years, the study found that about 55% of parents reported putting their babies to sleep with blankets, pillows, quilts, and other soft objects. Loose bedding is linked to an increased risk of suffocation and sudden infant death syndrome. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends babies sleep in a crib without any soft surfaces or objects. Millions of Americans suffer from depression and many have found relief from the symptoms by using antidepressant medications. But in today's Health Minute, Jim Morelli talks to an expert who says many cases of depression can be treated effectively with, for example, a pair of running shoes. Dr. Jane Erb is director of the Depression Center at Boston's Brigham and Women's Hospital. She says researchers are learning more about the power of exercise in treating depression, a therapy that, in some cases, can even take the place of antidepressant drugs. It's really just been over the last couple decades that there's been more focused, um, sort of clinically um, validated trials that have established that there truly are appreciable effects that go well beyond placebo. It's well known that exercise causes the release of chemicals in the brain, which bring about feelings of euphoria, the so-called runner's high. But there may be other physiological things going on as well. A recent study published in the journal Cell found that mice specially bred to contain high levels of a chemical released during exercise seemed resistant to depression brought about by stress. The important thing, Dr. Erb says, even for those with major depression, is to try and keep moving because anything one can do to try to counter the forces of the depression when the depression is just getting bigger and particularly if medications aren't working, um, the more it can help to kind of keep reins on that vicious circle. In Somerville, Massachusetts, Jim Morelli for CNN. Kobe Bryant becomes the first player to reach a major milestone in the NBA. Stay through the commercial break to hear what Willa Valley has to say. Titan TV is a student-operated facility maintained by students. It's on the Cal State Fullerton campus and it's a great opportunity for Cal State Fullerton students to get hands-on experience directly in a studio environment. Working with Titan TV puts me in this professional environment. Everyone here is really fun to work with and everyone just gets along so well. I'm having a great time. Many record-breaking milestones and primetime matchups occurred over this weekend in sports. Here's Will LaValle with the latest in sports news. Thanks, guys. All right, allow me to refresh your memory. 
last second player to win the game. It's a field goal from way deep. Field goal comes up short, and the opposing team catches the ball and runs it back for the greatest finish in college football history. You already know what I'm talking about. Last year's iconic Iron, ball be Iron Bowl between Alabama and Auburn with the last play of the game, leaving so many football fans in shock that it was worth tuning into this year's national televised game to see if the number one Alabama Crimson Tide can get their revenge against their in-state rival, Auburn. Alabama down nine with uh, three minutes left here. Here goes Brian, Brian Sims coming in. Looks back, sees his number nine target, Amari Cooper for the 75-yard touchdown grab. Cooper goes on to have an historic game. We'll talk about that later. Here he is, though. Marvelous catch right there. Here's Sims again, falls back, he looks for number nine again. Doesn't see him, but you know what? They fall back so much, worried about the throw. He runs it in for the 11-yard touchdown run. Crimson Tide, after that, never looked back, and they go on and win the game 55-44, to clinching the SEC West Division Championship. The game sets an all-time uh, Iron Bowl record as well for points, and Amari Cooper sets the Iron Bowl record for receiving yards with 224 yards and 13 grabs. Now, moving on to the big boys, the NFL had a great matchup of their own this weekend with the New England Patriots taking on the Green Bay Packers, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, two of the game's greatest quarterbacks going head-to-head. -head. We go to the first quarter, Rodgers stepping back in shotgun formation, fakes the pass one way, throws it deep, and who knows, the other Rodgers catches it for the marvelous crab right there. Over the shoulder catch with the touchdown. Packers go up 13-0 after that. Rodgers falls back again, throws a slant pass to Jordy Nelson, runs it, runs it, runs it. Can't catch him, but wait. Oh, is it? Yes, hits the pile on. Review, replay, shows touchdown, and Jordy Nelson gets a 45-yard touchdown pass. Touchdown. Now, Brady, doing Brady. Draws back, throws a lob. Brandon LaFell with the touchdown for his second of the game. Brady, you know, he's the classic. He'll get his comeback here. Here he is with the game winner. Wait. Ah, oh, Green Bay Packers get the sack, and the Packers go on to win the game 26 to 21. Now, eight years ago this past Wednesday, Kobe Bryant put together one of the greatest individual basketball performances in sports history. In 42 minutes of playing time, Bryant piled up 81 points. He shot 28 of 46 from the field, 7 of 13 from three, 18 of 20 from the line, and to lead these Los Angeles Lakers past the visiting Toronto Raptors, 122 to 104. Those same Toronto Raptors were in town last night, and guess who put on another show? Kobe Bean Bryant. Spoiler alert, it wasn't another 81 points, though. We start here in the fourth quarter. Kobe Bryant getting ready, blows the knuckles. Here we go. He's got Terrence Ross on him. Step back, fall away. Oh, and Ross hits him on the legs. Kobe does the mamba stare. For him, this is just business as business. He'll go on to shoot the free throw and put the Lakers up. Ross, though, trying to put them up, goes a three-pointer, nails it. And the Raptors look like they're going to take the game away. They go up 109 to 108. Kobe later makes the free throw and ties the game, but his chance to win the game goes up. Foul? Nope. Ref says hand straight up. Game goes to overtime. Here's Kobe again, taking on the smaller Ross, posts him up, fakes one way, does a classic Kobe way fadeaway, and that just about does it. Dag dagger, the Lakers win the game and give the Laker, the Laker fans a much-needed victory. He nearly messed around and got the triple-double, 31 points, 11 rebounds, and 12 assists. And also for his milestone, he's the first career player, first ever NBA career player to score 30,000 30, points and 6,000 assists. Not even Michael Jordan did that, just saying. Now, for the NBA play of the weekend, it comes from the Phoenix Suns against the Orlando Magic. Gerald Green drives to the basket, gets stuck, nowhere to go. So what's he do? You know, just throws it off the backboard and throws it down. Who else wouldn't do that, right? Let's take another look at this. Gerald Green lobs it up to himself and throws it down. Too bad the Lakers gave him up a couple years ago. That will be all for today in sports. But lastly, we at Cal State Fullerton would like to congratulate one of our own alumni. Former Titan and MLB player Mark Kotze was hired today as the new hitting coach of the San Diego Padres. It's his first coaching job after a long professional career. Congrats to you, Mark Kotze. That's all with sports. I'm Will of, Will of Alley, and back to you guys. New Orleans is shining bright at the historic Gallier Hall. CNN reporter Jacqueline Kelly has the story. Tonight, the past and the future of art came together with a one-of-a-kind light show that's never been done in the city before. I think they did a really good job of introducing New Orleans to what's possible with this kind of work. The Arts Council commissioned La Maison production to bring the projection mapping art show to New Orleans. 
which was not only unique to the city and its history, but specific to Gallier Hall, which had to be measured and then laser scanned because no blueprints exist for the 169-year-old building. You get this digital map and then you create a 3D model, then you have graphic design, motion graphics, special effects, all new music composed for the work. And it was a major hit for those that crowded Lafayette Square to catch the show. I've seen these kinds of shows in Paris before and on lights and projected on public buildings, but nothing this good. This is better than anything I've ever seen. The effort, the creativity, the history of New Orleans, I mean, it, the music, the graphics, it's phenomenal. And now the hope is to teach local artists the art and craft behind the technology so they can light up New Orleans too. That's all we have here from OC News. I'm Alyssa Flores. And I'm Quinn Tian. Stay dry, California, and enjoy the change of weather.